Hello, and welcome to episode 123 of Bardic Quest. Our heroes are now returning to Phandalin, after uncovering not only the Lost Mine of Phandelver, but also its legendary Forge of Spells. They return now to town, weakened and weary, with not only the remaining Rockseeker brothers, but also a strange new companion in the form of Marvelous Shalfort. What awaits our heroes when they arrive back in Phandalin? And what, exactly, will be their next moves? So, without further ado, let's get into this week's episode of Bardic Quest. Last time, um, you had successfully defeated <clears throat> Dryal Bonebreaker, the now absolutely ex-husband of uh, Saga. He, <laughs> Bad has remained. He has ceased to be. Um, I was going to say an ex in the Monty Python sense. Yeah. It's an ex well. <laughs> Beautiful plumage. <laughs> yeah. um, but of course, uh, you were able to uh, defeat him with the glorious assistant assistance. Sorry, of uh, the marvelous, marvelous Shalford, um, who is now uh, joining you on your return to Fandolin. Uh, with Gundren and Nundro in tow, um, eager to uh, gain yourself, gain yourself, enjoy. I don't, don't know where "gain yourself" came from. Enjoy uh, a nice ale uh, in the Stonehill Inn. There. Um, so, a few hours of travel has taken place since we last you let last. Left you last. Goodness me. I'm going to put my teeth in. Um, and uh, you're making your way now into Phandalin proper. Uh, now, Marvellous, this will have been your first uh, expedition, shall we say, into uh, Phandalin. Um, and what you're seeing is uh, a number of wooded hillsides. In fact, you will have uh, come down from a wooded hillside yourself, having gone into the, mm -hmm. the mountains. Um or at least the foothills of the mountains. Um, and uh, as you emerge uh, onto a rutted track, you get your first glimpse of Phandalin, uh, which is a town consisting of about uh, 40 to 50 simple log buildings, some built out of uh, old field stone foundations, and then surrounding that more old ruins, uh, crumbling stone walls covered in ivy and the like, um, which really shows that at some point this town was much larger than it is now. Um, mm. Most of the newer buildings seem to be set as, uh, along the sort of cart track that leads into town, which you're kind of following as you make your way into town as well. It is evening at this point um, as you've made your way back into town. Um, and uh, you can see that the track widens out into a sort of muddy main street uh, a market square and in the distance you can see the ruins of an old uh, manor house on a hillside to the east of town um, and as you approach even though everything's kind of winding down for the evening you can still see a few children playing outside and uh, a few animals around like dogs and the like um, interestingly Saga and Johan 
as you are making your way into town, uh, could I actually get an insight check from <clears> the <throat> both of you? Oh, no. I don't like the sound of They're not dogs, they're wolves! No! <laughs> <laughs> not again. <laughs> Twelve. Uh, eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Johan, you are very aware. I mean, obviously you are still rather weakened uh, post uh, Wraith encounter. Um, looking very frail and a bit gaunt um, as you make your way through town. But as you're looking around, you become very aware that seemingly every animal on the street, be it chicken, cow, dog, whatever, um, it's a market town, hence the cow. Um, <laughs> just a clarification. Uh, you you obviously you. have cows roaming the street all the time. Um, you can no, just lock eyes with this cow. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're very aware that all of these animals seem to be really um, <clears throat> on edge, shall we say, by both yours and Saga's presence. Um, this is new, this sort of behaviour. Yeah, <laughs> yes, this is new, certainly. Uh, dogs are barking and baring their teeth, certainly. Um, any cats that are around, hair stood on end, hissing at you as you pass by. Uh, but it only seems to be focused in on you, Johan, and Saga. Everybody else seems yeah. to be perfectly fine as you're making your way into town. Hello, little kitten. Whoa! <laughs> How quaint! <laughs> uh, of testing this and, like, getting closer to an animal and then backing away to see how it reacts. You know, kind of scientifically, and then kind of just looking at Saga and the other, and then just kind of motions over to Saga and goes, this seems a little strange. Yes, it's it's really odd. She'll, she'll sort of check her hands to see if she looks different. If she starts it, I don't know, transform. Mm -hmm. Like... Do I... I, Sorry, do, I look, do I look um, you managed to find, um, you know, obviously windows and things that you can take a look at. You look down at your hands, nothing seems different. As you look at your yeah. reflection uh, in a window, um, you seem just as you would expect to see when you look at your reflection. Nothing seems physically maybe different. They can, maybe they can sense things that regular humanoids can't. I'm going to go over and violently sniff Johan. <laughs> <Okay>. Violently. <laughs> uh, what, what are you trying yeah, to, like... uh, to determine? Uh, maybe Sergei thinks that he can um, smell some difference on Johan. Um, it could be a smell thing. Sergei's used to things running away from the stench. I see. All right. Uh, yeah, give me a uh, perception check, please. <laughs> okay. That's a high price if this is a 20. It's a 9. That's fine. It's a 9. Um, um, uh, plus perception, so 12 overall. Sure. Um, I mean, he certainly smells like somebody that's been out adventuring for a few days and not been able to have a nice, pleasant bath, which to you probably smells pretty normal. Pretty if nice. I, if anything, <laughs> probably quite clean. <laughs> <laughs> you smell clean, your head. Thank you. What are so, you doing? <laughs> <laughs> My nose can sense many things. You think it's something to do with the way I smell? Uh, well, I don't think so anymore. I did. Your hand's now conscious. <laughs> Sergey, so, okay, people near a temple window shouldn't throw stones. This is okay, greatly. I wonder who smells the best of the party at this current moment. Who do you think? Marvellous. <laughs> yeah. I have been walking cross country, but I've not been in the mines. So. Yeah. <laughs> Saga would 
turn to Thoric and go, we really need to find a cure for this curse. Give me till morning and I'll hopefully have something. I don't know for certain, but oh. um, give me till morning. Let me <laughs> let me sleep. Let me bathe. Let me sleep. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Marvelous's uh, eyes light up at the word, the, the, the mention of bathing. And he's like, hot bath? Hot bath? Hot bath? <laughs> hot bath? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> I mean... Okay. Or so perhaps we should uh, speak to the locals in the morning to see how long this has been happening. Or is this merely since we've come to town? I think it seems to be aimed at just us. Is this a is this a werewolf thing? Yeah. But then why me? I don't curse understand. Is a curse thing. I've Remember? been cursed for a, a while, <laughs> and the animals were fine with me before. <laughs> so well, you read yourself now. Sorry. Well, a, yeah, a bit of both, actually, yeah. <laughs> as a werewolf, do you clean yourself? <laughs> I, I, clean myself just like, I clean myself like a normal human being. Thank oh. you. <laughs> also, it's werewolf, not a cat. <laughs> Dear diary, I've noticed Saga is getting more canine in her attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear gods. <laughs> she started um, marking the camp. <laughs> every every time I throw something away, she brings it back. <laughs> no one was complaining when I was hunting for dinner, now were they? <coughs> yeah, you can bring the no. sword back. Oh my god. God, I was back <laughs> at some point. Did um, did a uh, hubby have a? Well, it's too late now. <laughs> but I assume hubby didn't have a Johann sword about his. Uh, well, it certainly wasn't still embedded in his uh, side. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I got him in his eye. Should have taken yeah. his eye. <clears throat> um. Sergey. Yes. Sorry, you, you, James, you're going to say. No, something. I was going to say we need some rest, please. <laughs> Sergey, I. What time is it when? Uh, it is evening now, so it is um, sort of. Not like super late. Uh, no, not super late. Sort of uh, perhaps dinner time. Mm-hmm. I want to go and talk to um, Agatha. Is it Agatha? Margaret. 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 Agatha Who's was Agatha? the the the. Oh, Who's Agatha? Agatha's the, the banshee. banshee. <laughs> oh. oh yeah. You're I the, don't you, want to be Agatha. Mis- you've mistaken Margaret for Agatha on a number of occasions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret is insulted. <laughs> Margaret. Mm, yes. Um, I'd like to go talk to Margaret about. Did she say again with the thing she gave you? Did she say anything or? The just... rings that intertwined. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the interti- intertwined yeah. rings. Did she say anything? <laughs> Memory serves. Um, she essentially implied that they were like a good luck charm, if memory serves correctly. Yeah. She- I'll hand the, the, the rings over to Thoric if you'll take them and go, um, she implied they were a, a good luck charm. Uh, well, so far, she's not been wrong. Uh, take the rings um, and uh, sort of looking at the companions. I I won't be long. Um, this has been burning my mind for a while. Would you mind if I went and had a chat with her before coming back? We'll come with you. Maybe not all of us in one go. We'll we'll wait for you in the tunnel. If you'll forgive me being cryptic, um, I'd like to go by myself. Yes, that's all right. Would I'll, you like? I'll, I'll take the rest of this lot to the tavern. Would I'll you like take anything? Take as the... long as you need, brother. <laughs> Just drag them. You want by us the to put an order in? Yeah. <laughs> I'm. I'll, I'm probably going to tell you everything anyway, but I just. <laughs> 
Just give me a minute, okay? I, I'm sorry for being all weird and wibbly. Orthotic. No apologies needed. Call us and we will come. Would you like us to order you some food? Yes. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. I hand them the giant bag of copper. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll be taking that. Thank you. <laughs> not, not knowing that it would contain copper, my eyes light up like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> like money bags. Mm. All right. Unless that's copper, that's a lot of money. Every thief in a like 100 mile radius just goes. <laughs> <laughs> all right um so the four of you um head into uh the stonehill inn then mm-hmm. uh whilst uh thoric heads uh for margaret's house uh so we'll uh hop over to uh the stonehill inn to begin with um so as you enter the stonehill inn um as it is indeed dinner time obviously the sun has set it's uh quite dark outside but uh, it seems that it is peak time in the Stonehill Inn right now Um, lots of locals drinking and eating Um, Gundren and Nundro's eyes light up as they see the uh, the beer pouring a plenty uh, from behind the bar Um, this is certainly much busier than the last time you were here when uh, the Lord's Alliance seemed to be occupying the town Um, much more lively everybody uh, seeming much more full of cheer Um, and um, you do notice um, there's a couple of things that certainly grab your attention Uh, well uh, one that certainly captures all of your attention which is that there is a new member of staff behind the bar a uh, young man um, who is uh, serving drinks and uh, interestingly uh, young Elsa um, doesn't seem to be present um, at present Um, she is not not currently serving um, but this young man seems to be uh, taking up the slack for her uh, not being there um, mm-hmm. But also, Sergey, something definitely grabs your attention as you walk in, which the others will have noticed, but um, but may not have the same impact as when you notice this. But sat in the corner, uh, just kind of watching everything going on in the inn, uh, is uh, a familiar face, a uh, woman who you have had dealings with in the past... That good. Yes. Young Harlia Thornton. Well, I say young. She's about middle-aged. Uh, but uh, This Je- was the one from the Miners Exchange, right? Uh, yes, correct. Uh, the woman with the dark hair, dressed in dark clothing, um, just sat, uh, kind of watching everything, watching the whole room as she sits in the corner. And she uh, certainly notices you enter. And uh, she gives you a a look, Sergey, and a nod, but not one necessarily of um, respect, but more a nod of yes, I know you're here. Is the I kind will, of vibe? I'll just kind of glare back at her, <clears throat> just complete blank expression, um, and then I'll just go up to the bar. Nice. Your hand leans into Sergei. Sergei. Oh, yes, you're welcome. That woman's done nothing but stare at you since we arrived. Oh, I know. <laughs> Sorry. I, pre- uh, I appreciated that, Holly. <laughs> I appreciated that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also true. He, he would actually say yeah. that. And he kind of, his, his hand goes to the hilt of Stephen, just kind of taps the pommel. <clears throat> no, no. It's okay. Calm down, you two. Let's just get a table. Wayne. Yes. Are there plenty of tables available, or is there only one near this woman? Um, <laughs> there are Don't not. Give ideas. There are not plenty of tables available. There are only a few, uh, but luckily uh, they are not located too close to this woman. It's not the largest uh, tavern in the world, um, but there's enough space that you could uh, leave space uh, between yourself and her, certainly, and not have to sit too close. Um, Do we... Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, do we have to do that awkward thing you do in pubs where you stand by someone else's table while they wait? To... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not quite that busy, uh, but uh, but there's only maybe two tables free at this okay. point. 
presumably it's going to take a while for the new bar staff to count out the coppers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to pay in coppers because I, yeah, I'm not going to pay in coppers. Okay. We like, have we don't leave people in the How expensive is the beer here? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yes, I mean, in, in fairness, you probably won't need more than a few coppers unless you are uh, ordering food at this point. Um, well, I'm going to order food. I'm going to order drinks and food for everyone. All right. Once okay. they sit down. <laughs> oh, how kind. It's funny how the command sit is in, is ingrained in her head recently. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 Also, it was wolf, not a trained poodle. So, <laughs> um, so uh, in terms of ale, uh, you're looking at, uh, for the uh, standard uh, Donda ale that is served in the region, you're looking at uh, six copper pieces per pint. Um Got it. For a uh, for a, a roast for a roast beef dinner, uh, you're looking at uh, five silver pieces, um, or uh, you could have a, a sort of stew for six I'll, copper. I'll do the roast beef dinner for everyone. Nice. And whoever wants ale can have ale. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, how much it is, and I'll take it off. So, so, in which case, then, if it's uh, a roast beef for everyone, that's going to be. Yeah. Uh, now, I assume you're including Gundren and Nundra in that, right? Oh, yes. Yes, I'm not heartless. All right, just checking. Uh, so, it's going to be 35 silver for the roast beef, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, it will be uh, 42 copper for the ale, for the round of ale. 32 copper. Mm-hmm. How much is the... I only have 15 copper, because I think well, I didn't you can, take... The uh, well, there are, ten, there are 10 coppers to a silver. Someone help me with maths. How many silver is the ale? 10 copper to a silver. So the... 35 silver, so it's only 350 copper. Plus, uh, for the booze, that's... Which is already... just the 40 silver or 4 gold pieces. Thank we have you. plenty of gold. Thank you. Yeah, there we go. Minus four. Right. Thank you. Or just under half the bag of copper. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't take the bag of copper. I refuse. So. Oh come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so. There we go. It's um, you place your uh, orders, mm-hmm. uh, and. Uh, the, there's obviously Toblin Stonehill, the proprietor. His wife is still uh, serving as well as normal, um, but uh, there's obviously this this other um, individual who is uh, serving drinks as well, uh, and they are kind of working together, kind of like a well-oiled machine at this point. Clearly used to the busy time. This new person, not quite so, but seems to have everything under control as they at least uh, arrange for your uh, ale before um, you uh, take a seat and await your food. Um, So. Thoric. Hello. You're heading out uh, to um, Margaret's. uh, You've been there before. Uh, You know where she lives, so you find it quite easily. Um, there seems to be a little uh, candlelight or firelight of some sort coming through the window. So clearly there's, well, it seems that there is somebody home. Mm-hmm. I um, politely knock on the door and take a few steps back. Okay. And um, as you uh, knock and step back and wait, you hear a little bit of uh, shuffling um, from inside. And then the door kind of opens slightly. And uh, she looks at you and she says, Oh, hello! What can I do for you? Uh, good evening, Margaret. Um, uh, sorry to uh, barge in. Forgive me for my state of disrepair. We've just got back uh, from being away. And oh, be then we're nice. Work. You could say that. Um, oh, lovely. Would you mind... This is awfully... Bolder me. I'd, would you mind if I came in? I just wanted to talk to you about something. Oh, uh, please. Uh, do come in. I'll. Uh, would Would you like me to make you a tea? Yes, please. That would be 
very welcome. Right, oh. <clears throat> and she uh, pours some water into a, a steel uh, kettle. Mm-hmm. And she just places it above the fireplace. And she says, oh, please, uh, take a seat. And she's got these uh, blankets over uh, these two armchairs. And she beckons you towards one. Thoric kind of um, dusts himself down over the, before he crosses the threshold as best he can and sort of tries to make sure he's not just getting, like, oil and other things on the soft furnishings and as best he can. Kind of, he's still in his armour with a big war hammer and his shield, which he kind of, like, props against the wall. <laughs> and, like, sort of just <clears throat> rests his hammer down a little bit too firmly um, next to the to the chair and kind of sits with his armour sort of up, all up around him. Um, <clears throat> and he uh, takes out of his pack the... Uh, the the symbol that she gave um Sergei mm-hmm. and um looks quite sort of doesn't it feels like a mixture of awkward but also kind of trying to actually suss her out like trying to gauge her mm-hmm. as a person and can I just kind of look around the room if there's I don't know any clues as to if she is more than this quaint woman Mm -hmm. living in Fandolin? Uh, Sure. Um, What sorts of things are you looking for in particular? I don't know, like (laughs) things that I wouldn't expect someone who presents her love, herself like she does mm-hmm. to have in her home, like, I don't know, swords on the wall or... I see. Um, um, I don't know, that kind of thing. Yeah, ju- I mean, just from looking around, to be honest, um, this looks like a fairly normal home. Um, the only things that are perhaps um, a little bit curious, but not even curious, that's probably overstating it a little bit, um that stand out is the little sort of like knickknacks that she has. Um, but nothing's jumping out at you as particularly symbolic of anything, just kind of the occasional ornament of a cat or, you know, those sorts of things. Um, you know, she's got her, her nice plates and things. Some of them hung up on the wall, um, blankets and throws, uh, so it's it's certainly not a peasant's house um, to the same extent that you would normally expect. Um, she's got her creature comforts. Mm. But aside from that, there's nothing here really that indicates uh, this is the home of uh, anybody except a cosy old woman. Okay. Um, I take the, the tea from her gratefully. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you very much um, and um, thank you for this and shows it quite clearly and mm-hmm. tries to read her face when she sees it okay give me an insight check mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, an 11 11 okay that's a shame her face lights up and uh she says oh he did get it to you then lovely uh well I- i'm glad you like it it he's he's thoric's really baffled by her just general chipperness and just he just kind of drops the pretense and plunks the cup down and just says who are you she uh Looks at you and she says, uh, I- I'm confused. So am I. Do you know what this is? She uh, looks at it and she says, um, I-, I believe that is uh, the uh, symbol of uh, the uh, mother of dwarves, is it not? It is indeed. And are you not a dwarf? Yes. Right. How... 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do you... She's a human, isn't she? Mm -hmm. Where did you come by this symbol? Well, there are lots of um, dwarvish mines in the hills around here, so occasionally some knickknacks uh, crop up from the local folk, and uh, somebody who didn't really understand what it was uh, was uh, selling it for a cheap, cheap price, and I thought, oh, that would look quite nice amongst all my knickknacks, so I thought I'll, I'll buy that. And uh, is, then I saw... Is she lying? Go on. Can I get a sense? Is she lying to me? Is she spinning me a tail? Is she... Do you want to give me another insight check? I'd love to. <laughs> better it's very annoying because i'm very good at insight and i rolled really crap the time before that's a 16. okay um you get the impression she's deflecting a little <clears throat> she says and of course when i when i uh bumped into you lovely folk i thought well a dwarf will be of greater need of this than i why didn't you give it to one of the other dwarves? Well, I, I don't just give out my uh, my belongings uh, willy nilly. You understand? Uh, <laughs> you know, I I, I I I want to make sure that it's going to go to a, a nice home, and uh, you seem like a nice dwarven man, and uh, so I thought it only seems right that it go to him. <laughs> Um, Will it nil it? <laughs> that sent me over the edge. <laughs> um, she in says, I'm very sorry, have I offended you by giving you this gift? No. Um, oh, that is good, because that is the last thing I would like. You've been very kind to me, and as of your friends, and I, I'm, I'm really glad that I haven't caused any offence. In in Dwarvish, mm -hmm. um, I ask her, do you know what Feanor means? She looks at you curiously. And uh, she says, I'm sorry, you'll have to repeat that. I didn't quite catch that. I asked you if you knew what Feanor meant. Oh, um, it is a word I have heard amongst uh, amongst dwarves. Um, uh, 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 holy dwarf, I think. No, oh, Thoric's really getting the impression that she knows more than she's letting on. Um, Thoric says, I found uh, evidence of a Fenor near, um, it was near the old owl well, was it? Um, you were on uh, the, the old owl well, yes. Yeah, where there was a, there was an owl bear nest and I found evidence of a, of a Fenor. Um, I didn't find a body or anything. Do, uh, do you think he is in danger? I don't know if it's a he. Oh. Well, do you think they are in danger? I don't know. But I found uh, this as well. And he takes out the locket and hands it to her. Uh, she takes a look. And uh, she opens it up. Reads what's inside with the image as well. And uh, she goes, very sad indeed if uh, if this person is, is lost to the fates. This is not something that you would leave lying around, certainly. Do you know who these people are? Um, let me have a look. And she goes and grabs a pair of spectacles places them on the end of her nose and has a has a look and she says um well I, I must admit the picture in here is somewhat familiar to me but I have lived a long life now and I am struggling to recall 
But there is something that's familiar about this face. Hmm. Why? Well, what? 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 Are you? Are you hoping to um, to locate them? That person is dead. Uh, oh. But they are my ancestor. And I wonder if you'll forgive me why a human woman from Phandalin would know anything about this. You haven't offended me, Margaret, but I'm getting the impression that you know more than you're letting on. She and uh, what lets out a big sigh and she says, um, uh, you tell me, have you spoken to your mother lately? Um, no, because she is in Mirabar and I'm here. What do you know of my mother? Margaret. She says, um, she does miss you terribly. You didn't answer my question. How do you know my mother? Well, as I said, I have lived quite a long life. And, uh, well, I have, uh, in my time, been to very many places. And, Did she send you here to check up on me? Uh, no, she didn't send me here, but um, I felt that it would be the right thing to do. To keep an eye on you, that is. <clears throat> I ask her leave to make a path for myself. I took the vows. I spent years under her tutelage. And I ask for one year to come and use what I've been taught to actually make a difference rather than sitting reciting words in stone halls. I leave for a few weeks, a couple of months maybe, and already she can't just let alone. She says to you, she says, you do understand she is very proud of you, Thoric. I know I that know. you have had your frustrations with her and, and the way that she uh, likes to guide you in her own way. <clears throat> but um, she is very proud of you, despite what you may think. I know that you feel as though you perhaps don't fit in with the rest of the family and, and such, but... What in the nine hells do you know about my family? Well, as I say, we have, um... We have a relationship, your mother and I. You're dancing around the point, you're talking in damned riddles. I think I'm speaking quite plainly. Your mother and I know each other very well. And, uh, I know that you are feeling... Uh, somewhat out of sorts with the rest of the family and uh, I am trying to communicate with you that uh, perhaps that frustration is a little misplaced I'm not I'm not out of sorts with them I'm just trying to do what I'm being trained to do <sighs> so what do you wish to achieve here in Fandolin then would be my question I want to help people. It's all I've ever wanted. I, but and you're not, doing an excellent job, my. But I not because, 
but not because I'm Fainor and not because I'm a damn Silverhorn, but <clears throat> because it's the right thing to do and it's what I want. But can you not be a Silverhorn and do those things at the same time? Is it so bad that I just wanted a little distance from that? No. To not have everyone dip their head every time I damn well pass like I'm some sort of bloody... I don't know. To just be Thoric. Not son of the high fucking priestess. Not bloody... You know, with the weight of all of that... just hanging on my shoulders this expectation of what I'm meant to live up to who I'm meant to be what I'm meant to do you know to follow in her steps to be her son maybe I just wanted to be me for just a damn second perhaps But perhaps, perhaps there is an element here of uh, the two goals of yourself and uh, your mother, perhaps, being parallel. Yeah. I think your mother wants something more for you than just continuing on the family legacy. But perhaps you might be able to uh, continue that legacy your way. Not one predetermined by temples and family values. Because let mm. me tell you, sometimes these uh, these temples they can they can get it wrong across mm. all across all uh, beliefs. I think that's always been my problem. I've not really had... <clears throat> never had to have belief because I've known they're there. But I can't really say I'm someone with a lot of faith in the gods. Sometimes people put a little bit too much faith in those gods, if you ask me. Vicky? Oh and she uh, grabs <clears throat> a plate and hands you a plate full of biscuits. I take a Vicky and I eat it with great relish. What sort of Bickies are they? Uh, rich teas, digestives, um, ginger nuts. Now we're talking... Uh, he he will clear up the ginger nuts because the other two can literally rot in their fucking biscuit barrel as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> um. <laughs> this is a whole debate that's about to be <laughs> There is no debate. Rich tea, I'm going to say it right now. Rich teas. Oh, rich teas are garbage. Straight They're up. just not. The digestives, They're in a digestives are good. Digestives are good. Fight. Digestives without chocolate or anything else. I'm yeah. with you on digestives. A bit of vanilla, uh, perhaps, but a solid biscuit. No, <laughs> vanilla would be vanilla would be would be a flavour. Yeah, they are all the enjoying hard, a texture. They are hard tack. <laughs> Glorified coasters. Uh, Thoric, <laughs> before we move back to uh, the Stonehill Inn, is there anything else you wanted to say to? Margaret. Yes! Um, <laughs> I'm just like, I'm still so baffled. I'm just like... <clears throat> what? It just uh, takes the locket again and just kind of like shakes it out of her and just like, whose is this? This is my ancestor. Why the hell would someone have this on their person? Well, if it's your ancestor and... Uh... You don't have any other relatives to pass it to, then perhaps the argument could be made that it is yours. 
he like goes to like and then just like really aggressively dunks the ginger nut and pops the whole thing <laughs> in his mouth. And it's like I found it in the middle of nowhere near a camp. Someone was there. A Fenor was there. Did she come down here? Your mo your mother? Yes. Who else? Oh, I mean, she's 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 popped by. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> he just kind of incredulously just says, "When?" <laughs> <laughs> she uh, she says, "Um, oh, you were." You were uh, out and about at the time. She didn't want to bother you, of course. She uh... <laughs> she was adamant that you were to have your space. <laughs> so is she... she here now? Oh no, she's gone. She's long gone. But uh, she asked me to keep an eye on you, and so I have. But I, I do promise you that that those rings are from <coughs> my collection. They're not your mother's. If she has come down here, I saw a camp of a Fenor that was left there, and this, and you've just told me my mother has been here recently. As much as she's technically not a Fenor, um, because she's, you know, a little bit elevated to that, do you not now see my problem with maybe being a bit worried that my mother has been accosted, devoured by an owlbear? So... I feel a little bit guilty here for uh, perhaps dropping your mother in it a little bit. Um, <laughs> but uh, your mother has uh, some unusual methods for knocking you onto the right track, wouldn't you say? I look very hard at her. How tall is Margaret? Oh, well, she's uh, very old. She's a small old lady. <laughs> I reach a hand towards her face. <laughs> right. She kind of no. backs away a little as your hand gets closer. I'm not going to hurt you. Uh, and I touch where her face should be. Mm -hmm. Do I feel the soft peach fuzz of my mother's face through what I am now suspecting might be a disguise? You do not. The face feels very much of that of an old woman. <laughs> I'm <look> really <laughs> mental now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so you. <laughs> she, uh, she kind of there's a there's a pause as she kind of looks you in the eye, Thoric, as you kind of caressing her face. She's like, I take my hands away and I'm just sort of apologetic, just go, I'm sorry. What methods are you referring to? Well. Um, what would you say is your mother's biggest, uh, shall we say, uh, uh, objective when it comes to guiding you to where she wants you to be? <sighs> to have me... was all Fenor, but me specifically. Use the skills to make my own choice. I see. But 
I'm not blind to the fact that she has her agendas, which aren't bad agendas, you know, she's not pulling the strings in nasty ways, but just sometimes I get the impression that if I don't make her choice or the choice she'd make, it's a, hmm, we'll see how that turns out then. <coughs> And uh, what if I t were to tell you that she's a little bit worried that you might be uh, veering from the path a little too harshly? <clears throat> what would she mean by that? And well, uh, how... uh, particularly as it relates to the uh, the family legacy, you I mean you 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 avoid uh, you using your your clan's name, and uh, you try not to uh, be too. Uh, vocal in your fain or faith and um, well perhaps uh, and I'm only talking hypothetically here of course <clears throat> but perhaps she may have placed something for you to find in an attempt to just nudge you back onto that path that she's so keen to get you on she left the locket. Now, now, I'm as I say, I am talking hypothetically, and uh, I don't want you to think that I am. Uh, you oh, know, what damn spells do I have prepared? <laughs> <laughs> she said, "Now, now, 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 now." <laughs> For its hands just start like glowing uh, without his, <laughs> without him thinking. Now, um, now, not in me. a like malicious way, <laughs> just. He just starts like sparking and his fingers start glowing with light. Um, and he's like, I do not have the thing I need prepared today, but you can bet your bottom silver, Margaret, I shall return tomorrow. <laughs> the of truth, God's damn prepared. <laughs> um, and just. <laughs> <sighs> I'm going to worry that there is someone who this belongs to that is out there dying. If you don't tell me whether she left this specific thing for me to find, just tell me, did she do that? She uh, lets out a big sigh and she says, now you didn't hear this from me. But yes, she did. Who the hell am I going to tell? Your mother, of course. And you know God. your mother, when she gets wound up, she can be quite terrifying. Oh, does she now? Oh, I had no idea. Thank you so much for telling me. I've only been dealing with it for over 200 years. <laughs> um, well, um, was there anything else, young Thoric? Has she said she's popping in again for tea and beer keys anytime soon, Margaret? Uh, no. She uh, she has full faith in me that I will keep an appropriate level of an eye on you. Right. And you're going to continue to do that, are you? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> and report back to her. And... Well, if there's anything that needs reporting, yes. Letters, is it? Or Raven? Uh, yes. Oh, sometimes, uh, you know, she is quite a powerful woman. Sometimes she uses more direct means. Right. Well, you can stop with the subterfuge, because if she just wants to talk, I'm right here. Oh, well, uh, when I next speak with her, I'll... I shall pass that on. Tell her thank you for her breadcrumb trail. I will. Just so you're aware, that was sarcasm. Oh, right, yes. <clears throat> I did know that. I could sense it in the tone of your Good. voice. Good. And, um, have a lovely evening. Oh, you too, Thoric, you too. 
he takes uh, his sword, his uh, sword, he doesn't have a sword, his hammer and shield, leaves the place, takes five steps forward. Um drops the shield and hammer on the floor, takes a deep breath and lets out this guttural bellow and just goes, ah! and I use my third level spell slot to cast Guiding Bolt into the fucking sky. It just like lights up this silver beam that like just splits a cloud. Um, and then just kind of picks up the hammer and shield and walks to the pub. I just wanted to take a quick moment to say a huge, massive thank you to all of our patrons who have brought this show to you today. So a massive thank you from us to you, to Nigel Raggett, Rebecca Hill, James Hamilton, J.R. Belliston, Jason Bradwell, Jason Udall, Chrissy Kirby, Robert Treadwell, and Gary Lloyd. Again, a huge thank you from us for all of your support and making everything that we're doing with this show possible.